What's up YouTube, Del here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you an update to Scareclaw, but this time we're gonna keep it on a tidy budget. Now, if you were smart enough to pick up your Fenris before the ban list, you probably will be able to add Fenris to the deck and still maintain it in a budget overall. However, if you are looking to pick up a deck going forward, this is one of the decks that I really do enjoy. It's a great OTK option, but it also has some nice defensive playability behind it as well. And you can build it very, very cheaply. So, with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content. So when we're saying budget about this deck, I've tried to keep the cost of this deck below $100 possibly even below $50, depending on what alternate options you take as we go through the list. So we start off with Triple Scareclaw Right Cart. You can put this up very, very cheaply right now, purely because it's kind of fallen out of favor in the Manadiums, or Manadiums have dipped a little bit. That may change, um, but even then, this is one of the cards that is um, a little bit more available from the Megatins, as a lot of people are hunting out the higher chased cards. You've then got three of each of the commons. So you've got three Belong, three Acro, and three Astra. Now, all of these are absolutely insanely powerful for the deck because they're all technically free extenders, they're all starters, and then all of them give your Link Monster additional effects. So Astra gives it the ability that it can attack a number of times each battle phase up to number of defense uh, Scareclaw monsters you control with different names. Now technically, when you include Scareclaw right card, you can have up to five monsters on the board that are Scareclaw monsters in defense, meaning your tryhard can attack five times. Not that you should need to have five times to win the duel from that point on, but it is possible. Then you add a sixth attack on top of that because your Scareclaw Kashtira can also attack in defense. Very nice. Um, then of course you do have your Belong. Belong lets you do piercing battle damage through defenses. And then of course you've got your Acro that gives your monster 300 attack for each defense is your monster you control. So again, if you've got five, it's gonna get a nice 1500 boost, making it a base of uh, 4500, not to mention any debuffs that your opponent's monsters are gonna get because of the field spell. As this is a budget option, we are playing triple Scareclaw Cash Tira. Now, obviously, you could play it at two when you have the Fenris. Fenris is just one of them ones that is an additional extender. It's a nice interruption, and it searches you out Scareclaw Cash Tira, which is a nice way of being able to get a 2600 booty on the board that can also attack in defense. Really do like this card. I like it even in Cash Tira plays, um, and it wins you so many games because a lot of people will see it in defense and go, oh, okay, cool, I'm not going to die this turn. And then you go battle phase and like, yeah, all right, whatever. You attack, you attack, you attack. They're like, okay, I'm still alive. And you go, okay, attack with Scareclaw Cash. And they're like, what? So that's just sometimes people not reading the card, but it does give you that extra win con option. We are then playing the one Visa Starfrost. One is more than enough. The field spell searches it when you want it. It's part of your one card combo and it does unlock your um, Vicious Astralow plays as well. This is only like eight pound, so I still consider that to be budget. I think the most expensive card in here can actually be swapped out and I'll explain it when we get there. So that's it for the monster lineup. All of these are really, really cheap. Like Scareclaw Clash came as a common. Um, Astra, Acro, and um, Belong all had original common prints, so they're like 1p each if you find a friend that's just like, they might have been given to you. Uh, Visas, I saw someone selling a playset for like 15 quid, which is absolutely mad, and I think it's even less than that. Plus it gets a reprint again in January when we get the two player decks as well, but you should be able to pick this up really cheaply, and the fact you only need one, it should be easy to do, and then right card, like I already said, very, very cheap. We've then got two of the Monster Reborn, Scareclaw Arrival, and two of the Primitive Planet Reichphobia. Um, obviously, you only need to really play two of this because you don't really want to open it. You want to be searching it off of your uh, Link 1. So, very, very easy to do so on that one, so your Light Heart. And then, of course, your Monster Reborn is not a once per turn, which is really, really nice. It is the Banish to Protect effect that is, but it does give you that ability that you search it off a of right cart, or if you already open it up, you've just got two extenders for pretty much free. Then for the one of spells, we are playing the one instant fusion, the one call by the grave, one reinforcement of the army, and the one defanging. Now, um, instant fusion is to get you into uh, Millenniumize Restrict as a defensive option to play through some sort of hand traps, but you can also make it aggressive and go for Thousand Eyes Restrict to steal one of your opponent's monsters. And then if you wanted to, you could link off, but the idea is that it's a nice little one for one bait, and then it is an effect monster that can be used to climb up into Scareclaw Triheart as well. Defanging is a great aggressive option. For the defensive option, we've got Twinsaw. Um, now you can very easily go for Slash as well if you want to, and you'll probably swap out the Defanging for that. 
But the way that I like to play Scareclaw is a little bit more aggressive and you'll see that through the additional cards that I'll show you in a minute, just because of how aggressive push I like to play with it. But then you can of course make it more defensive. So Twin Sword is tribute to Scareclaw monster, target two cards your opponent tries to destroy them. And if you do, and you control Vita's Star Frost, you banish those cards instead of sending them to the graveyard. Then if you have a Link 3 or higher monster on the field, you can banish this card from your graveyard. The rest of this turn, neither player can activate the effects of Link monsters on the field. Now the best thing about Twin Saw is that it's just if a Link 3 or higher is on the board, it doesn't need to be on your field, which is really kind of cool. And then Defanging is your opponent cannot target Scareclaw Link monsters or Visa Star Frost you control with card effects, so they can't stop the shift to defense effect of Triheart. And they can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, so they can't just no longer Dark Hole and clear the board off or Raigeki and go from there. You banish any monster destroyed by battle with a Scareclaw Link Monster or Visa Star Frost you control, and you can also banish a Scareclaw Link Monster from your field or graveyard, target a card your opponent controls and destroy it. So very nice spot removal as well. For the hand traps, I went with Ash Blossom and Double Ogre. The reason I didn't go with Vela in this build is because I'm also going for Forbidden Chalice. Now the way I see it is Forbidden Chalice is a nice way that kind of meets that cheaper middle ground for like an Imperm and a Vela, um, but I am also playing Forbidden Droplet as well. So this is the most expensive card in the main deck, sits at about £12, it might go up now that the ban list has officially dropped. It is going to get a reprint in November in the collection anniversary set as well, so it is something to be aware of. If you haven't got the money to afford these, you can very easily cut them out. You can go for Veilers, you can go for Ghost Mourners if you want to, you can go for a third Ghost Ogre, it really is up to you of what you have access to. I personally wouldn't go for Dark Ruler no more because I feel that the deck is a, it struggles a little bit more. Once it breaks a board, you're then trying to still play go first cards. Whereas I feel that Droplet gives you that best of both and so does Chalice. So it really is up to you. As we are, like I try to play a little bit more go second, but I do like cards that can be utilized going first and second. And that's why I quite like Book of Eclipse. Because even if you're going first and you build up your board with Try Heart and you have a Book of Eclipse set, you can still activate this, flip your monsters to defense, doesn't make much of a difference, and still flip your opponent's monsters to defense. Yes, they flip up in the end phase, but they flip up in face up defense, so they're already in the position that Tryheart wants them to be, so you can just go boom, 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 boom. Uh, so that's why I go with Triple Book of Eclipse. Again, just another option of a board breaker that can be used going first or second. And then the final card is Cosmic, because like I said, you want that balance of if your opponent is playing a control deck, you can deal with it. If your opponent is playing an aggressive deck, you can deal with it as well. It deals with main deck floodgates. It really does cause a few issues for your opponent because not many people expect this to be mained. Again, depending on your local environment, depending on your play style, you can very easily take these out and swap them for something completely different if you want to as well. This is where this space here from ashes onwards, in my opinion, is like massively flexible. I feel that your acros belongs right cart and all of that is pretty staple. And then the only thing that I would change from the spells that I showed you previously is whether or not you wanted to play slash or not in the main. And then that's when you can adapt these cards further down the board. So that's it for the entire main deck. Now onto the extra deck. And like I said, the most expensive card, like all of this, crazy, crazy cheap. All of this, crazy, crazy cheap, expect droplet. Ashes are like five a copy. You should have these by now, but if you don't, um, go and buy the Track Trick Structure deck and you'll even have evenly matched for your side deck as well. And the best thing about buying the Track Trick Structure deck is you'll have a control deck you can play that's really cheap and an aggressive OTK deck you can play that's really cheap as well. So you get the best of both. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone was a rare in Tarmar, very easy. Book of Eclipse has got had a rare in Tarmar, plus a super and a secret. So Droplet is the only one that's like, hmm, double digit cost. Until you get to the extra deck. But even then, that's, I still think that like Visus Astrolab is like eight pound, like I said. So it's not even a double figure cost, which is really nice. Speaking of the extra deck, we are playing Triple Tri Heart and Triple Light Heart. So obviously your light heart is the one that gets everything started. This is the one that kind of searches out the field spell, can be brought back from the graveyard if you control Vesus, everything you need. On top of that as well, then your try heart is your aggressor, your try heart is your game winner, your ending boss monster. And that's why you max out on all of these. Try Heart is not a hard once per turn, so you can link summon it a couple of times, build up everything you need to to get all of the Acro, Belong and uh, Astra set up to give all the effects possible to Try Heart if you want to as well. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with what these do, Lightheart, when it's, uh, you have to use one Scare Claw Monster or a Visa Star Frost. For this card's link summon, you can only use monsters in the main monster zone, so it means you can't like Lightheart into Lightheart or Tryheart into Lightheart. 
Um, and then if it is linked summoned in the extra monster zone, you get to add a primitive planet right phobia from your deck to the hand. And if you control Vita Star Force, you can special on this card from the graveyard. You can only use this effect once per duel. Very important that bit. And then Try Heart is again, it must be link summoned, so your opponent cannot monster reborn it or any of that crud. Um, all face on monsters on the field are changed to defense, unaffected by the activated effects of defense vision monsters. And once per turn, if this card is in the extra monster zone, you can target a level 3 Scareclaw monster in the graveyard, special summon it, and if you do, you add a Scareclaw monster from your deck to the hand. You can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Scareclaw, so as long as you do all of your other summonings prior to that, you're good to rock and roll. Speaking of your other cards, uh, Visa's Astraloud. So the Tri Heart and the Light Hearts are like a pound each, very, very cheap. Astraloud, eight pound. This is just a very like additional play. And what I mean by this is you would search out. So usually your play is you're going to start off with like Right Cart or something along the lines of that. You're going to turn um, or any kind of Scarecrow you start off with, you go into Light Heart. Light Heart can then search. If you start off with Right Cart, you go Right Cart into Light Heart. Search out Right Phobia, activate Right Phobia, get you Visa Star Frost, Visa's Pop um, Light Heart, summon down the Visa Star Frost, not to mention you searched out the Monster Reborn off of your Right Cart. Bring back the Light Heart, Monster Reborn the Right Cart, <laughs> link all three into Tri Heart, and then you'll have a Visus and a monster with 1500 attack and 21 defense in the graveyard. So you can then get into uh, Astraloud. Not to mention you can also go through Cross Sheep to give you that additional monster on the board should you want to. On top of that, Astraloud has a great effect that um, you can, it can't be destroyed by battle, and then if it is special summoned, you get to target one other monster on the field, destroy it, and if you do, this card gains attack equal to half that monster's original attack, whichever, uh, attack or defense, whichever is higher. So it'll go from 3k to a lot higher. Uh, the Millennium Eyes, of course, is your um, instant fusion target, and then you've got Link Spider to play through Nibiru, Cross Sheep to summon uh, Astraloud to his own points to bring another monster back, and you're good to Link Climb higher. Uh, Asua, the Earth Charmer. So obviously the idea behind this is normally you could play Dark the Dark Charmer, but we've gone, you, all of your monsters apart from Right Cart and Star Frost are Earths. Um, so it's a lot easier to make this and then you can revive your opponent's Fenrir. So it's like, ha, huh, you bought Fenrir, now I'll take that Fenrir. Uh, and then technically you can use that Fenrir to search out your own, um, your own Scareclaw cache, which is quite funny. Uh, then of course you've got your Nightmare Cerberus and Phoenix, and the reason we've got these is because it's quite easy to make them under our Tri Heart, so you're going to get the Co-Link pop and draw, um, whether it be back row or front row. And then the last two cards we've got is Nightmare Unicorn, and then as a budget alternative you also have Mech Knight Crusader Avramax, because sometimes if you can get into like um, a Tri Heart plus any other Link monster, you just or even like Astraloud, you can just link those into an Avramax. But you'd only do this if your opponent will struggle more to deal with Avramax than they will with Tryheart. Usually Tryheart is enough. That's your boss monster you're happy to leave it on. Um, but you can very easily make the Avramax. One other thing as well to mention about the tri um, the Lightheart is if you bring this back while you've got um, Visus on the board, keep in mind it goes to the main monster zone. So it unlocks the, the zone to point towards Unicorn, meaning that Unicorn can then be co-linked as well and get a nice little bounce and draw. So, just something to remember that you may not always be aware of, but the Monster Reborn of the Lightheart is really, really kind of cool. Just keep in mind, like I said, it's once per duel. So, once your opponents use that, once you've used that, remember. Usually, you won't go into much of a grind game because Scareclaw are either going to be OTK, win it, do it, done it, um, or control one turn and then win it, do it, game it the next turn. Anyway, that is it for the profile. Should you have any questions at all, by all means, please put in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. I really do enjoy the deck. I like the way that it plays. It's one of the ones that I waited to get the reprints from the tins first because um, I tried to build it when it originally came out. And I got two Tri Hearts, I got one Light Heart, I got one Visus, I then ended up getting uh, one Right Cart. And I was like, this is like, no one's got these cards to trade. It's going to take too long to build it. So I started getting rid of the bits. Uh, and then right cards went through the roof and I was like, oh, guess I'm not getting it at all now until the reprints. And then the reprints gave us everything we needed. So unlike Labyrinths and unlike Exo Sisters, where they're like, here, have everything apart from Magnifica or Big Welcome. With this, they've pretty much gone, here, have everything apart from this is Astraloud. And it's like, bro, that's an eight pound card. I'll be absolutely fine buying that. Anyway, that is it for the profile. Like I said, any questions, comments below. More than happy to answer them as absolutely always. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.